I've been working on a pattern in which the sleeves are sideways knitted, and it seemed like a good opportunity to help you out with that. It can achieve some interesting effects. Here you see the sleeve. It's facing you in the left-hand picture. And that's how it will look when it comes out sideways, vertical stripes. Here's the yoke attached to the sleeve in this particular pattern, which is called stupendous stripes. Ordinarily, we knit the sleeve from the wrist up, cast on, increase up the side of the sleeve, and sew the top end of the armhole where we bind it off. This is a pretty typical sleeve. Now we're going to turn that sleeve on its side, or that shape on its side, make the same shape but sideways. To do that, we'll cast on down what would be the length of the sleeve, knit one portion of straight knitting, that first pale stripe, and then a wedge of knitting made by short rowing, then a plain stripe, a wedge, a plain stripe, a wedge, and bind off. Knowing that, you can probably look at this picture again and see the wedges and the straight pieces of knitting. After those are all finished, we hang the narrow end back on the machine to create the ribbing. And voila, a normal sleeve but sideways knitted. In addition to following a pattern like mine, you could draw this on a sheet for your charting device and knit using that as a guide. Here I've begun the sleeve by casting on and I'm knitting the first 24 plain rows. Then we will short row for 34 rows making the first wedge. The entire sleeve will consist of repeats of those two phases. Make sure the carriage is set not to knit back from hold because we'll be placing needles in hold. This would knit them back, this won't. Same on both sides of the carriage. Place three needles in hold, knit across. Place one more needle in hold, knit back. This is the automatic wrap. Three in hold, across, one in hold, knit back. Watch what's really happening. By placing these three in hold, knitting across, Placing this one in hold, the yarn is now coming from underneath this last needle we placed in hold, which is a really similar effect to manually wrapping it. Not identical, so I recommend that you don't mingle the two, the traditional wrap, knit, wrap, knit, and this in one project. But this is a little bit faster and simpler. We do this for 18 rows in this size. So this is row 17, row 18. And now we short row out. That's called short rowing in. Push four into work. And one back out. It's so having a similar effect so that we don't get a hole. Let's knit so that another was row 19, 20, 21, 22. Watch and I explain. Short rowing in, which is what I'm doing now, is where the rows get shorter and shorter. Short rowing out is where they get longer and longer. In to the small, out to the big. So we're short rowing in with the automatic wrap, which is putting most of the needles in hold that you want knitting across, then putting one final needle in hold, and knitting across the other way. When we've reached 18 rows for this size, we begin short rowing out to a total of 34 rows. Weight is a big help in keeping short rows knitting smoothly. Otherwise, you may get some tendency of the stitches to loosen and want to drop off of the machine. Next to the needle that most recently knitted, there's a little pouch of looseness forming because all the knitting is not the same length. That's what the weights help. 
where stitches are loose on the needles, they may try to pop right off of the needles. That's why weights are helpful in short rowing. Now we're in the short rowing back out, row getting longer process, four into work, knit across, one back out of work, knit across, similar to the automatic wrap, so as to avoid any holes in the transition between the short and normal length rows. For this wedge, we'll complete a 34 row short row pattern. See what I just did? I did not make certain that my needles were all the way back into work perfectly, and that's what it caused. It's fixable, but it's best to be more careful than I was. As soon as we've completed this 34 row short row sequence, and we're almost there, it will be time to knit another 24 row stripe on all the needles, and here we go. I simply set the carriage so that it would knit all needles back from hold and proceeded with my next 24 row plain stripe. The entire sleeve goes like this. In order to get ribbing at the wrist, this is the wrist and it was originally one side of the piece because we knitted from underarm seam to underarm seam on the other side. There's no seam there yet, there will be. So we have to hang the wrist area on the correct number of needles. In this case it's 73 and here's how I invariably do it. I've hung both ends before you got here and then divided the middle, just decided where there was even an even spot. You can do it by feel and by vision. You don't have to count. And now I will go along sticking my tool in right beneath the first column of stitches. That makes the seam that I like the best. There are other places you could hang it. You could do this, picking up only a single strand. But I prefer for this yarn and for most yarns to hang a whole column of stitches. Now note that I am not counting however many rows per distance. Okay, let's flip these latches all over, open so it makes it easier. I'm just doing it as they fall, which is remarkably accurate. You can divide the space periodically to make sure of that, just as I did to hang the beginning. There is only one thing in addition to placement of your tool under that edge stitch that you need to be really concerned about and that is that each stitch, each needle, goes in a separate opening. If two were to fall into a single opening, the machine would knit them, but they would immediately release from the bottom up and you would be missing a column of stitches. And it's a very difficult thing to fix invisibly. Yes, you can latch them back up, but since they came out from the bottom, getting that bottom stitch anchored so it looks like you hung it properly is a lot harder than just getting it right from the beginning is. So pull and look as you go, looking to see that each stitch is in a separate opening in the fabric. And we'll also do a good recheck after knitting the first stockinette row. Now I'll finish going across off camera and then come back and we'll knit that first row together. Here's what the cuff looks like where it attaches when hung like this. Usually you can knit this first row with the carriage, but I like to make its life a little bit easier by pushing the needles all the way forward and letting the carriage knit back from hold. The carriage is at the far left, main stitch size, the yarn threaded in, and coming towards you. There we go. Now I can pull down and make sure that each needle 
has its own stitch and it's looking good if I were to find an error now is definitely the time to correct it but I don't have one so we can go on next step is to transfer every other stitch to the main bed I already put the comb on here this comb will be adequate for the river if I also add this weight let's lift the beds in the position and transfer every other stitch to the river the only thing I'm doing differently than you may be accustomed to is that for this chore I chose to use this kind of tool rather than the usual Now, did you see what happened I wrongly pushed this stitch forward and I do not want it to fall off so I'm catching it on the latch tool end of my tool and reseating it properly I really like this tool I invented it well I didn't really invent it because I was copying a passive tool I invented a way to do it that works nicely and it's in my cool tools and cheap tricks book So all the way across, transferring every other stitch to the ripper. If you wanted a different ribbing pattern, then knit one, purl one. If you want to knit two, purl two, then you transfer two stitches to the ripper, leave two on the main bed, and so on. All right, the carriage is off to your right. We're set up to rib. Both carriages are set to knit normally. Stitch size three, three is what I've decided on for my ribbing. I'm looking around for potential problems and see that I got my yarn wrapped around the gate peg. We definitely don't want that. All right, now we should be able to just knit normally for all the ribbing rows. Looking good. Now just knit the number of ribbing rows required for your size and design. Bind off in ribbing and your sleeve is complete. Well, this video is specifically designed to help you with the stupendous stripes pattern, which will appear soon in Country Knitting of Maine News and Views. You may find other places to use a sideways knitted sleeve. I know I've designed a couple more patterns that use it, and who knows, you could design one too.